This resolution is going to pass after we work this this week, George. Members have been in their districts and in their states. We've been talking to many of them, dozens of them. Uh, and when they see this intelligence, they don't rebut it. So the bottom line is they have to answer the question, should there be consequences? And the answer to that question will be followed closely uh, in Tehran, in Damascus, and elsewhere. All right, folks, uh, welcome back to the Steve Mullsberg Show. That was White House uh, Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough on ABC this week, yesterday. Uh, joining us now to talk about all of this from a legal point of view is our friend Alan Dershowitz. Hey, Alan, how are you? Uh, how are you? But I'm not sure there's much to talk about from a legal point of view. This is really a political decision, not a legal decision. And to the extent it's legal, the politics and the legality are almost inseparable in a situation like this. Okay, well, let me, let me ask you basic questions, uh, you know, we, the, the, whether or not the president has the authority. I mean, he could have ordered this strike without ever going to Congress legally? Look. The law on whether or not the president has the authority to take military action uh, against uh, foreign countries um, is um, – simply unclear. Nobody knows the answer to that question. Um, the Constitution says the Congress shall have the power to declare war. This is not something that requires a declaration of war. Um, we don't want to declare war on Syria. That would be absurd. Uh, plainly, the Constitution is inadequate to the situation. It's an 18th century document, and we're in dealing with 21st century problems. Uh, and so you have to look at tradition. And the tradition is we haven't declared war since uh, 1941, December 7th, and or 8th, and um, we probably won't uh, any longer. And um, uh, the president, uh, you know, until since that time, presidents have engaged in the Korean War, which is a real war, the Vietnam War, which is a real war, the Iraq War, which is pretty much a real war, the Afghanistan War. This is much, much different. This is much more like uh, Libya, uh, like Kosovo. Um, and anybody who tells you they know the answer as to whether it's lawful or not lawful is, is you know, is selling you snake oil. Nobody knows the answer to that question. It's an a and it's probably not a question that will ever get to the Supreme Court. During the Vietnam War, they tried to bring that issue right. to the Supreme Court, and it ducked, the Supreme Court ducked it repeatedly. This is a political question. So, okay, now, but just let me put the, these scenarios uh, through, you know, to you, and you give me your opinion, uh, if not on legality, at least on politics. Uh, so if, if this does not pass, mm -hmm. and he does it anyway... Uh, certainly politically, he's worse off than he had just, would have just done it on his own, correct? And is, it, without, is that illegal? Without a doubt. Uh, I think it, it makes his case for legality much harder since he put it to Congress. Of course, he said when he put it to Congress that he didn't think he had to. My own prediction is if it doesn't pass, he won't do it. Um, and look, let's remember what the situation really is like. Here we have a humanitarian issue that doesn't involve the United States. The United States is no more interested in, in this uh, than uh, any other country. In fact, the Arab countries should have a much greater stake in this. Pakistan should be far more interested in whether Muslims are killing Muslims, and uh, you know Jordan should be much more interested in whether Arabs are killing Arabs than the United States. This does not involve the national interest of the United States. We're just trying to be do-gooders. And then you have these hypocrites in Europe who claim to be involved in human rights. They're protesting, they're boycotting, they're doing all these things, and they say, you know, we don't care. People are killing each other, 100,000 people killed, 1,400 people gassed to death. We couldn't care less. It would be easier today to get the Europeans to want to attack Israel than it would be to get the Europeans to try to uh, <laughs> attack uh, Syria. They care more about uh, you know, Israel uh, building a settlement right. somewhere than they do about uh, hundreds of thousands of Arabs killing each other. It is such hypocrisy. The minute we pay any attention to those academic and media hypocrites in, in, in Europe is the minute uh, you know, we have succumbed to their selective and uh, uh, morality or immorality. Well, we're talking to Alan Dershowitz here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Let me ask you this. John Kerry says today, and this may uh, you know, be uh, on a par with what you said, uh, we're not talking about war. We're not going to war. We will not put people at risk in that way. But when, when you lob r missiles into a sovereign nation, is that not war? A declaration well, of war? An act of war? It's uh, certainly an act of war under the international law of war. But, you know, we did the same thing in Kosovo. We did it with some approval from NATO. Um, you know, we had sometimes had the United Nations. But the United Nations is impotent when it comes to anything that Russia or China sure. uh, doesn't want to do. Um, NATO is impotent when it comes to anything 
you know, the Europeans don't want to do. So if we want to be a do-gooder nation, and the interesting thing is that, uh, you know, Samantha Power, who was my former student, really was the creator of the concept of a duty to uh, help people. Um, and it grows out of the Holocaust. I mean, you know, nations stood idly by while 20 million people, including 6 million Jews and many gays, were killed. Nobody intruded at all. The United States would never have gone to war against Germany if Japan right. hadn't foolishly bombed Pearl Harbor. And then Germany probably wouldn't have even – we wouldn't have gone to war with them except for the fact that Germany declared war in the United States. And then we responded by declaring war on Germany. And, uh, you know, the notion that this is an administration that is dying to go to war, it's not. I mean, when you think of four people who are more adverse to war, it's hard to think of any four people more than Barack Obama, John Kerry, uh, Chuck Hagel, and Samantha Power. Right, but because but, uh, we're running out of time, and I want to wish you a happy, healthy New Year Thank as well. You. But Thank let you. me ask. But but Kerry's wrong when he says uh, it's not about war. We're not talking about war. It would be an act of war if it we. It would be an act of war. Yeah. But I have to tell you, Kerry did something very brilliant. I, well, I know, today. but we're at we're, uh, Alan. Okay. We're out of time. Uh, <laughs> but but I thank you for for, for weighing in, that. and we'll speak to you again soon. Alan Dershowitz, ladies and gentlemen, uh, right here on the Steve Malzberg Show. When we come back. A Catholic cross that will not be built on the Steve Malzberg.